Tom here. I got my dirty clothes on again. We're going to get, be getting dirty underneath the Jeep again today. We're planning on changing the differential fluid. I have a Dana 44 in the back and a Dana 25 in the front. So we're going to be pulling off the uh, covers, draining out the fluid into a pan, uh, refilling it with some gear oil and a pump. And we're going to put the gear oil into a quart container so we can keep track of how much we're putting in. Both of them take two and a half pints, I believe. I'll double check that before we put it in. So this is a Dana 44, like I said. It's a semi-floating uh, rear end with the tapered axle shaft. It's a 538 gears, which are the shortest gears, meaning the lowest gear ratio. The drive shaft will turn five and a third times for each turn of the wheel. So let's crawl underneath the back of this and we'll see what we can find. We're underneath the vehicle now, looking at the rear end. I'm gonna make sure my fill plug is operable before I drain all this. It looks like it's gonna come loose. Okay, I'm gonna start by loosening some of the bolts, make sure they're all gonna loosen. So far they're not too tight. tag up here that tells me my gears. These also came with a, I believe it was a 427 gear. So here's the tag. You see that? There she blows. We have most of the fluid drained and I'm pulling off the cover. Looks like they've used the silicone as a gasket. Not sure if that's the best thing to do, but there are the gears. I don't feel any chunks down the bottom of the case, which is always good. Oh, a little pitting. So we're looking at the cover. Significant pitting on the cover itself. And actually on some of the edges too, I believe it's where the gasket's going to be, it's okay. And they've used this uh, orange silicone, so I'm going to take a wire brush to it on my drill and get off some of this silicone and clean it up the best I can. That looks a little better. We'll finish this off and then we'll probably do the same thing on the other side. Next thing I want to do, I have a bottle of light oil here in a squirt bottle. Kind of like a ketchup bottle, although it's not a ketchup bottle. And I've cleaned off the sealant they used around the gasket area where the gasket's going to go. But next I want to flush out any old oil that I can and any particles of stuff that may have gotten in there when I was working on the cleaning of it. So let's start at the top. We're just going to squirt this in and let it drain back down into the pan. This 
this is just a lightweight oil. And we'll flush towards the bearings best we can. Now I'm just going to let that drain back out again. Then that'll take some of the old oil that didn't come out before with it too. So we'll let that drain for a few more minutes and then we're going to put it back together and refill it. So I'm using a little solvent to clean up the edge of this flange to recover where the gasket's going to be. Just to get the grease and oil off it. And I'm going to put a thin coat of gasket sealer on here before I put the gasket on just to hold it in place and to aid in sealing any irregular surfaces since it's so pitted. So now I'm applying a thin coat of gasket sealer just enough to hold the gasket in place and seal up any of the pit marks that we have on this surface. We'll let that dry just for a minute and we're going to apply our gasket. Okay, I think that'll be enough to hold my gasket in place. I'm going to do the same thing on the cover. And then we're going to put it together. There we go. I'm going to start a couple of screws. Let's see, this is a short one, right? Bolts, I should say. Where was this? That was there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. There she is, back in place. And you want to make sure you get your identifying tag back on there. I believe that was over here, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to torque them down. I'm going to look in my book to see if there's a spec on that, but I don't think it's too much if it is, if I can't find it. And then we're going to refill it. One thing I want to do before I forget is to find the vent hole. Some of your differentials have a vent hole on the cover. This one doesn't. I believe it's over here, judging from the oil that's over here. So let's, let's scrape around over here a little bit and see if we can find the vent hole. I think the oil is the telltale sign that it's over here somewhere. There it is. And you just want to make sure that that's not plugged solid. Okay, so we found the hole. It does look like it's plugged up a little bit. I'm going to take a small drill bit here and just try to clear it out. And yeah, that's plugged. There we go. Now she's clear. So we'll keep that clear so we don't build up pressure in our differential and blow out the oil somewhere. So we have a quart of gear oil here. I'm using a oil pump and I'm going to pump it right into the differential. This takes two and a half. There it goes. Oh. There it goes. This takes two and a half pints. So that's going to be one quart is two pints, and another half a pint is another eight ounces. 
Well, that's about it for that quart. Now let's add eight more ounces and we'll be done. So we filled up our container with another eight ounces and now we pump that in. Try the other way. We're tipping the bottle to get the last bit out of there. There you have it. That's it. We didn't spill a drop again. Let me see if I can feel the level in here. Just barely below the fill hole. So I believe that's good. I've cleaned up the fill plug and I've cleaned up around the fill hole. There we have it. Now it's on to the front differential. Here we've moved up to the front axle. This is a Dana 25. So this one has a vent right here. And I'll try and check that before we finish. So this one has a tag over here. 538 gears, same as the back, it has to be the same front and back or it won't work. These are the short gears or the low gears. I think the other option was the, what did I say before, 427? Here's the bolt with the tag on it. 438, 43-8, I believe that's the number of teeth on the, the gears, which results in a 538, can you see that? 538 gear ratio, which means you have to turn the drive shaft 5.38 times for the wheel to turn one time. Doesn't matter what size tires you got and all that, the gear ratio is the same. Although the size tire will make a difference in how the vehicle performs and how you know how fast it will go and all that. In effect it changes the gearing, tire size does, but I was looking at one guy's uh, thread where the guy was talking about the 538 and it has to turn 5.3 times depending on the sire tire size you have is going to turn the tire one time but that doesn't make any difference you have a 10 foot tire it's still going to turn one time so we're just about done the fluid's starting to come out one more bolt here on the bottom looks like they have the silicone on this one too which is kind of a pain Put a knife in there a little bit. There she blows. So I don't see any pitting on these gears like I did on the last in the back. And 
I didn't feel anything in the bottom of the case. I felt around for any metal bits. I didn't feel anything. So we're going to let it drain. We'll give a little flush. And we'll refill it. I'll have to scrape off this RTV or whatever it is. So that's it for now. We'll get her cleaned up and put it back together. So here's the cover from the front. You can see there's a pretty good ding from a rock or something in there. Then if you look on the inside, you can see where the gear's been scraping. I don't know how... It looks like it's thinned it up a little bit. Not too bad. I think I'm going to take a little block of wood and try to push that down a little bit. So it seems that my vent here was plugged up. I tried blowing through from the inside and nothing happened. So I'm taking it apart. I don't know exactly how they work, but... Plug solid. Tasty grease though. <laughs> so we've cleaned out our um, unit. We flushed it out with some clean, well, some lightweight oil uh, after we let it drain. We've reinstalled our gasket after I cleaned up the surface. I did bang out that little um, dent that was catching on the, the ring gear. And I also cleared out the, the vent. It was plugged up, so I cleared that out. So everything's good to go. We've got a little sealant on the gasket to help it stick and stay in place. And we're going to put it back together. The bolts on this one are all the same size. The only reason the ones in the back were a little different was because one of them held the, or two of them held the brake line bracket. I was surprised that little vent was so plugged up. It was plugged solid. Don't forget to put your little tag on there. So the next guy down the line that owns this knows what he's dealing with. Tag's been on there for 56 years or so. You hate to take it off now. So I'm just finishing torquing these a little bit. They don't have to be super tight. Okay, time to refill. We're going to take the fill plug out. I've got my pump loaded up with a quart of fresh oil, which is two pints. This takes two and a half pints. There it goes. There it is. Okay, eight more ounces. And we're done. Okay, we're back with our final eight ounces. There she goes. Well, we didn't quite get the full eight ounces in there before it started running out. Might be that it's a little bit on level or we had a little too much in there on the 8 ounces. Anyway, I'll check it again when we're for sure level. We might be tipped a little bit. There's the fill plug reinstalled. And this job is finished. So we're finished with our project. We refilled both the front and rear differentials. The rears are Dana 44, the front's a Dana 25. We checked out the gears. There was a little pitting on the back ring gear. There was nothing on the front that we noticed. Uh, I didn't feel any metal filings or pieces in the bottom of the cases. So uh, they're all half inch bolts on the covers. You're gonna need a few rags. Um, our pump worked great. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not a real hard job, but it does take a little time and you're gonna probably wanna put new gaskets on if you can. So good luck working on your Jeep. Have fun getting greasy and we'll see you in the next video.